Hi everybody, I just wanted to give you some final reminders and tips regarding the OSSLT, otherwise known as the Literacy Test, which will be beginning tomorrow. So we're going to go to our slideshow. This is a brief presentation, but it has a lot of important information. So first of all, you need to know when you are writing. The test dates are April 4th, 5th, 9th, and 12th. Your period one teacher should have told you where you are writing, but just in case you're confused, it has been posted on the grade 10 LMS page, so you can check your location. If you are a grade 10 student who is not in a period one class, you will be writing on April 12th. And a number of students have been deferred. This is causing a little bit of confusion. This means that you will be writing next year. Your parents were notified uh, before March break and Ms. Danielowitz has spoken to you personally, so there was plenty of time to make any changes. At this point, we are not uh, able to accommodate any further changes. So, you need to be prepared. You will need your OEN number. We are providing it for you, but it might be a good idea to look on Aspen. Your OEN number is how you are identified to EQAO, which is the organization that is marking your test. It's a government organization, so you are not known by your name, you are known by your OEN number, and you will have to log in using your OEN number. Please don't um, do anything that would result in a de delay or result in you missing your uh, the, the instructions at the beginning of the test. We are only able to give the instructions once at the very beginning, so make sure you are on time at the, in the library, so you need to report to the Learning Commons or the library by 8.05 if possible, that way when the bell rings you are ready to go. Please make sure you are in uniform. Your phones will need to be off and put away, um, otherwise we need to report it to EQAO, the government, so please um, adhere to those rules. And it is a good idea to review beforehand, beforehand by checking out the OSSLT prep page on LMS. We have just included a self-marking activity for the information paragraph that you can read and answer questions and work on a main idea question, so that's an excellent practice activity. And there's also an actual practice test on the LMS OSSLT prep page that is modeled exactly on the actual test, so that way it familiarizes you with what you will expect on the real test. Okay, so some final tips here. Please make sure you answer all questions. Do not leave any blanks. You are not penalized for getting a wrong answer. So if you are not sure what to do, just make an educated guess. You don't want to miss out on passing the test just because you've left blank. So please answer all questions. There is um, a feature that allows you to flag any difficult questions and return to them later. So we suggest that rather than, if you come, to, if you come up to a difficult question, rather than wasting lots of valuable time on that question, if you're not sure what to do, you can flag that question and then return to it later. It will remind you at the end before you submit that you've left some questions and that you've flagged some questions and it will direct you back to those questions so you can uh, try to attempt them later. Uh, you will see often in the instructions they refer to the selection. The selection does not refer to the whole test, it refers to the actual piece you are reading or working on at that moment. So that's just to clarify that item for you. Next, please answer each component of the question. Sometimes in a short answer question they're asking you to do more than one thing. For example, you might see a question that states, Explain your answer using information from this selection and your own ideas. In that statement, they are asking you to do two things. They are asking you to explain your answer using proof from the text, and they're also asking you to use your own ideas. So make sure you're answering every part of the question. You can even use your highlighting tool to help you identify the different parts of the questions and to highlight what they're asking you to do. Make sure you use proof from the text. Always go back and say, I know this is the answer because in paragraph three, they are talking about such and such and such, etc. So make sure you're using proof from the actual text. All the paragraphs in the selections that you will read are numbered, so you can use that to help you uh, refer back to the proof. And you can even give quotes as well, of course. Please make sure you use complete sentences. 
in a lot of the written parts, you are going to be also marked on your grammar, punctuation, and your actual writing. So make sure you're using capital or uppercase letters to begin your sentence. Make sure you end your sentences with the period, etc. So take a, make sure that you are using complete sentences and paying attention to your writing. Next, for the opinion piece. The opinion piece is worth the most, and it is the longest part of the test. So make sure they're asking you your opinion on an issue. Most of these issues have, you will be familiar with most of these issues, so hopefully you won't have too much trouble trying to figure out what to write about. Please make sure you are sticking to one side of the issue. Don't talk about pros and cons, and don't talk about one side and then the other side. Make a point, decide on one side of the issue, whether you agree yes or no, and then you focus your writing on that side of the issue and state your opinion based on that. Make sure you are providing proof reasons and examples state your reasons prove it give examples from your own life give examples from school give examples from your friends family from the news there are lots of ways that you can provide proof and then you explain why that proof supports your opinion you because it is an opinion piece you are allowed to use I so that is permitted and make sure you designate separate paragraphs because you're again you're also getting marked on your writing style. So, and it's and it takes up more space too to, to use separate paragraphs rather than writing one big long paragraph. You will lose marks for that. So make sure you use an introduction where you state your opinion and your reasons. Aim for three body paragraphs if you can, each explaining one of your reasons for your opinion. And end with a conclusion which restates your opinion and reminds us of what you are talking about. Next, make sure you are organized. Read all the instructions. Use the rough notes option. They actually provide little sticky notes that you can write. Uh, you can type things on the sticky notes. You can type points and ideas and brainstorming. We will also be providing you with good old fashioned pen and paper if you need to use paper to write things down if you prefer to use that method to brainstorm ideas and to look over your and to look over your answers is another thing that you should be doing. Always read it over. There's plenty of time. Everybody gets extra time. So take the time to read over your answers and make sure you haven't missed anything. For the reading selections, it is a good idea to read the questions first so you have an idea of what you are looking for when you're actually reading the text or the selection. There's also a really good function that we recommend everybody uses. It's a split screen function. We will show you how to use it. And basically it has the questions on one side and the actual text on the other side. So that way you can go back and forth rather than clicking a whole bunch of times and you can see everything all on the screen. And it's very helpful. We do suggest that you use that feature. And you also have a uh, highlighter function. So highlight paragraph numbers that are referring refer to in the question. So if a question states, in paragraph four, what is the purpose of the dash? Well, you can highlight paragraph four, and then when you are reading that text, you know that there is a question about paragraph four. So you will pay closer attention to what you need to do. And it helps to focus your reading. And those are proven uh, literacy skills or test-taking skills that will help you. Almost done here. Don't forget, grammar and punctuation count. Use complete sentences. Make sure you're capitalizing. Double check your grammar and punctuation. Please avoid slang. You are not texting. Don't write like you're texting. Please keep in mind that your audience is an adult, not a friend. So please make sure you are writing accordingly. Indent all paragraphs so it is clear to the person who is marking your opinion piece that you are starting a new paragraph. And you can do that simply by pressing the space bar five times or pressing tab. Use all the space provided. The one thing about this test that might be a little confusing to some students, we are used to, in as students, uh, having a mark value. So when you have a test, it, the teacher will tell you that certain questions are worth five marks, 10 marks, etc. They don't do that on this test. So your only gauge uh, as to how much to write is the space provided. So use the space provided. If you've only used half the space provided, 
it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to use, lose a lot of marks. So you need to fill in the space. Think of a new idea, think of a new reason, think of some examples or proof to fill the space. It does let you go a little bit over, but not much. So it will tell you, it will give you a word count, and it will let you go 10 characters over, which is not very much. So please keep that in mind when you are writing or if you tend to overdo it with your writing. Some other um, final, oh, make sure you use all the space provided. We talked about that, sorry. And just some final reminders. Um, if you are absent, we cannot guarantee that we can accommodate you. So please make sure you are present on your assigned day. We have just enough computers for the people who are scheduled, so we may not be able to accommodate you. If you are absent because you're ill, that's okay. You can write next year. You still have another opportunity to write. And a lot of people ask me about the passing mark. This test is usually, it's not really marked the way we traditionally mark in schools. It's out of a score, an overall score of 400. You need to receive a score of 300 in order to pass. So that roughly aligns to a level three, which is around a 70% or so. So that's just to answer that question. A lot of people wonder about that. So good luck. If you have any questions, you can see me in Student Success. You can talk to Miss Jillian Guidance. You can talk to Miss Danielowitz in Room 104 or your resource teacher or Mr. Juba. So we will see you in the library on time, on your allotted date, and good luck on the OSSLT. Thanks, everybody.